When it comes to gardening, big is usually better. The more space, the better it looks. So what do you do when you've got a tiny little courtyard or a tiny little garden? You've got all the problems of fences, hard surfaces, shadows from the neighbours. Well, you don't curse those problems, you work with them. And I've got a courtyard and a tiny little garden that I'm going to show you where they've solved the problems and how. Wow, such a clever use of space. Yes, it's a courtyard, but it's still a garden. And there's something here for every different person in the family. Not to mention it's beautiful. Now, like any small space, if you imagine the bare bones, what would you be looking at? A paling fence, the wall of the garage, and then the straightness of the house. It'd very much be a rectangle and look very boxy. So to soften it and change that, they've just put gentle curves in, like in this stone wall and the seat across the back. The fire pit adds another circle, but the thing that does the best and makes this look more like a garden than a courtyard is the planting and how soft it is. Just softening things like the stairs and the curves around the lawn. This is very much a garden rather than a courtyard. And in a small space, you would think, keep it on the one level and make it as usable and as big as possible. But by having that level change, you create two spaces and a little bit of intimacy up the back. And that's what you want when you're sitting around a fire pit. And making your little retaining wall double as a seat is perfection. Because in a small space, you want to use as many things as you can. So we've established that it's beautiful, but what is really good is it is usable. I can imagine a whole tribe of kids or mum and dad sitting out there around a fire. I can imagine the kids rumbling on the lawn. And the lawn is probably the reason why this little courtyard looks like a garden. It makes a little space very green. Most people think in a courtyard with big walls and high fences that the lawn's gonna die. But really the only spot where it's not thriving is in there under deep shade. There's so much interest on the ground that your eyes are drawn down, you don't notice any neighbours. That little garden bed there looks like coral. And then the feature when you come into the yard is this pond. You've got the koi and the goldfish thriving. That's not just a boring path that you walk over. There's steppers that you need to concentrate on. So they look good and they draw your eye. So in other words, it's clever garden design. And the brief for this courtyard was solitude, somewhere that was tranquil, where you could relax, but also entertain. And I reckon this garden has ticked all the boxes. I mean, who wouldn't want to lie down there and read the Sunday paper? Who wouldn't want to invite their friends over and really settle in for a good night session? And as far as gardening goes, well, everything you look at pretty much looks after itself. Often when you look at beautiful gardens like this, you might think, I can't afford the whole thing. But if you break it down to individual elements, like just this day bed, it's doable and it's achievable. This is beautiful, it's sandstone, and it draws your eye to it. But it's also super comfortable to lie on. What I like about it most is it breaks this up into two areas. You've got the steppers surrounded by the ground covers, and this area is very green on the floor. And then you've got this large formal entertaining area. It's practical and it looks good. And in a small space, it's every inch that counts, but it's how you use it that's more important. Here you've got a mini retaining wall and this floating seat that wraps around the table and then runs longer than it. Clever for a lot of reasons. This garden bed could quite easily be at the same height as the paving and the garden bed on the other side, and you'd have to bring in more chairs. So the way it is now, I figure you can fit about 10, 15 people around this side. Still got enough space for another 10 or 15 to stand up. If the table was in the middle, you'd have six, and that'd be it. An ugly store-bought shed, three or 400 bucks, very practical. But when it's screened off with a beautiful hardwood slatted fence like this, the whole garden still looks beautiful and is practical at the same time. And just like the steppers over that little water feature, these ones do the same thing. They're irregular and they draw your eye down, creating a point of interest and creating interest with me. A little bit later on, I'm going to tackle my own courtyard and I think this might feature heavily. Well, I found myself a little inner city courtyard and I'm going to link one end of it with the other and replace this. Now, I love my lawn, but there's a time and a place for it. Big tall wall, high house next to no sun. All this here is weeds. And the fact that you can dig in here and it comes out so easy 
just suggests that there's no roots. So this is the perfect candidate for some sleek looking steppers. Now to keep the price down, because large slabs of stone or even forming up and pouring concrete's expensive, I'm going with a large format paver. These guys are 600 by 400, and that's about as big as you can physically move around. But to vary up the sizes, I'm going to trim them to different widths. And the secret to getting steppers of different sizes to look good is to get the gaps between them the same. So it works out that all my gaps are 145 mil. It's a lot easier to do it on the floor like this, just moving them slightly, getting it right, takes a couple of minutes, compared to sitting at a desk with a calculator, scratching your head, trying to remember year nine at school. Wet the back of your pavers before you put them on the mud. That way, the pavers don't draw the moisture from the mud too quickly and cause separation. Step one, you can have lots of fun. Step two, there's so much you can do. Step I always wanted to be in a boy band. It's just you no? Me. no? Four. Not talking to me? When it comes to planting in a little courtyard or a small space like this, it's important to think about scale and size. These cordial lines are perfect. They look quite big in this area. They'll hide a few of the walls and make this place look more intimate. Any bigger, well, they just end up looking like these palms, and they're pretty much telegraph poles because my eyesight, I can't even see the foliage. And on the ground, scale's important too. Things like these Dianellas, they're not going to take over the yard. They're going to fill this space, which means you don't need to weed. And if you have a look, there's lots of shade-loving plants here, lots of variegated plants, so the white margins or the colour on the leaf really brighten up the place. When plants attack. And not only have we borrowed the stepper idea from the earlier garden, we've used the planting idea too. Why have soil when you can have plants? between the steppers to soften everything and to give this garden a garden. I'm planting dichondra. Now, this loves the shade. So even in a dark spot in the garden, it's going to stay nice and thick like that. And it's not just the steppers that are going to give the floor texture. Obviously, the plants look great, but we're using a few different mulches. Pine bark around the plants and pebbles under the clothesline. What a transformation. From a bit of a goat track to a beautiful space in a courtyard now. And as far as price goes, I reckon this garden is a bargain. Now, the pavers, 65 bucks a metre. We've only used three metres because we've laid them as steppers, so that's $200. There's $1,000 worth of plants. That was the big spend. But there's only sand, cement and mulch to add to that, so it was a $1,500 courtyard. You know the old saying, champagne on a beer budget? Well, this is the landscape version of it. <laughs>